Hello and welcome back to the Reapers. So we've uh, come to the point where we've got to do carrier landings and takeoffs in our educational series and we're starting with the SU-33. It's designed to do this so it should be nice and easy in theory. Uh, so let's uh, see how we do. So the first thing we've got to do is to put it in the correct navigation mode. So you press 1, not return, yep landing. So you see, let me get the cursor up, see it says landing there, that means it's in the right mode. So. It's already got a waypoint set up for this carrier, so it knows where the carrier is. Here is the distance of the carrier in kilometers. And also, it's going to give us a targeted speed, that's 320, and my actual speed, 370, a targeted altitude, and a tar and my actual altitude. And here is a directional pointer, uh, uh, the circle. And what we want to do is chase the circle until it's in our crosshair, and that means we're uh, going to get on target. So stand by as I find where the carrier is. Just follow the... Uh, waypoint on your map screen it should send you straight to the carrier Roger noted oh yeah another pointed thing out there by uh, thing pointed out by Sherman on my map screen down here you can see it when the sun's not here it does point me towards the carrier so um, you can see my uh, heading there basically basically the carrier itself becomes the return waypoint Roger so we are there so I you can see the circle starting to settle what I'm going to try and do is put my cursor inside the big circle, but Sherman, can you explain what the little circle is and what a bit more than, than what I've been saying? So essentially, the little circle acts as a um, as an ideal glide slope. If the little circle is inside, sorry, not glide slope, glide path. The big circle, little circle is inside the big circle. Then you are on the right direction to get to the glide path. Right, so it's still all we I'm doing is chasing this big circle like so, and aim to get the little circle inside of it. Uh, also, there is so. there is an ideal angle of attack indicator here. If you're too high, that light comes on. Too low, that light comes on. And ideal is there. I tend not to use it though. Right, I'm too high and I'm too fast. Right, so as I was saying, so the way that nav circle works is it tries to get you onto the correct path, as it will. So you'll notice that when you roll left or right, that is the point at which the circle adjusts on your HUD. Roger that. G for gear down, F for flaps down. When the gear's down, we're going to put the hook down with H. Okay, um, there's the indicators that the gear down, the flaps are down, and the hook's down. Okay, Sherman, it's telling me to go 250, that's too slow for me. I like um, a little bit more than that. Remember, it's kilometers, that's closer to 120 knots. That is slow. It's a, it's a SU-33 on an aircraft carrier, it's more than acceptable. Okay, I've gone off my path, so I'm trying to get it back again. Happy with my speed checking everything my trims all over the place at the moment so I'm getting my trim sorted okay I'm back on I'm back on the path pretty much a little bit low how does the LSO look uh, you're slightly low which means you add a little bit of power power on okay now you're on the right path agreed Okay, now you're descending again. Power on. Power on. Add power, little power. Power on. Tiny bit of alpha. Don't, don't uh, adjust your alpha. You only adjust your power. And well pretty much down there and ah, the last thing I did there was I went for full military power um, just in case I missed it that means I could go around again uh, that was pretty so, good I mean, yes. it, it wasn't a very clean landing I must admit but everything there essentially worked hook up so yeah to explain when you you never want to be cutting your power as you touch down the deck and when you touch down you want to immediately go full mill power because there's every chance in the real world that a wire might snap after you catch it Roger that, or yeah, or we could just miss a wire. Well, yeah, I see yes. what you mean. Yeah, so even after you've caught the wire, you still go full mill, don't you? Yes, there's some plat footage of a, uh, of a, what's it called? The AWACS aircraft, the Hawkeye. Cool. It landed, the wire it caught snapped, and of course it's a, it's a turboprop. So now the turboprop, you see it go off the edge of the landing platform, and then half a second later you see it climbing back up. Yeah, Roger. 
Right, okay, uh, so then what I did is I put my folded my wings up for carrier space, we need for carrier ops, that's right, control and P. So, straight into it, we're going to go and do a takeoff now, so that is control, uh, right P to get, sorry, right control and P to get my wings down, I'm going to go and find my slot, I'm going to number three slot, Sherman. Uh, you mean the numbered slots, right? I don't know, you tell me where to go, for a normal so, takeoff. So, there's three slots available, but you want to go to the one just off your right, you'll see there's a yellow line, that's your ta takeoff point. Roger. Sherman, how fast did you say this carrier was moving? 11 knots. 70% fuel on the full load off the front deck, let's see if it will happen. Not gonna happen. I uh, say about 20 knots, you can get 100% fuel on the full load. Yeah, so... Landing aircraft, wave off. Hey Sherman, how does that position look? Perfect. So what you want to do is turn off your nose wheel steering at this point. Roger. Thank you, Tail. Right, so now it's time to take off. Let's talk about what we need to do to take off. So let's go through the basic steps. Now there's two types of takeoff. One is a light takeoff, one's a heavy takeoff. So this particular aircraft has got no uh, weapons and probably not that much fuel. So it's a total weight of 50,000 pounds, that is 23 tons or something, which is uh, very light for a flanker. So we should be able to do this in just a basic light takeoff mode. So first things, make sure our flaps are down, F done, make sure our hook is up. You can see the uh, little dot there above the gear which shows the hook is up, so that's fine. Um, all good, just doing my own checks. Uh, make sure nose wheel steering is turned off. Then what we're going to do is hold the wheel brakes on and we're going to go full throttle but before we do that there's one more thing i need to think what is oh yeah and that is to say as soon as we're off the end of the ramp we want to put our gear up straight away because we don't want that extra drag so as soon as we get to the end of the ramp pull back plenty of alpha plenty of alpha on the stick plenty of back stick and gear up so we're going to go full throttle hold brakes for as long as possible and release once the burners are on which they are can't steer because we've got no wheel steering that's the best way to have it up gear up back stick <clears throat> and absolutely uh, perfect so that was fine right so i'm going to quickly uh, land reset myself uh, with a heavy loadout and show you the heavy takeoff standby right so we're back here again this time we are fully loaded we've got full weapon suite and if I can see it and my fuel tank there is full let's have a look at our weight so we weigh pretty much the maximum weight uh, 72,000 pounds just 33 tons or something like that so exceedingly heavy so if we tried to take off like we did before we would just splash into the sea and die so in this case we need some extra stuff so all the usual stuff flaps on make sure turn the uh, nose wheel steering off or we're slightly askew here I've just got to line myself up first line there hold I'm, I know I'm slightly off the uh, dotted line but it should be okay uh, we'll uh, nose wheel steering off right so uh, if we zoom in here which is our brake pressure uh, uh, display <clears throat> if I just press the normal wheel brakes you go up to uh, reading one so that's uh, 100 um, kilos per centimeter squared I believe like so uh, but then we have a special brake uh, for aircraft carrier heavy takeoffs um, and there is a binding it's called a start wheel brake I think it's called so I bound it to my joystick and there it goes all the way up to 200 uh, kilos per centimeter squared so it's a much more powerful brake that we can use uh, so that's the difference we're doing there also we're going to ramp the engine power up as well we've got special afterburner mode that we can use uh, so when the afterburners come on um, that light and that light come on and if we uh, use the special afterburning mode I think it's either that light or that light come on show green to show you you've got extra boost to the engines basically give us extra power to get us up <clears throat> as well as that the, putting the gear up as soon as you're off the end of the runway applies but otherwise it's essentially the same um, regards key bindings left shift and E do the special afterburner mode left shift and W do the um, extra brake mode right so stand by as we take off so heavy brake on full throttle afterburners on release that green light comes on so that's special afterburner mode on ground steering turned off extra slow this time plenty of alpha gear up to lessen the drag 
Oh, we're dropping. We're dropping. Go on, I'm Bennett. So even with, and we're just up. So that was absolutely full loaded flanker, and that uh, we just made it with all of our parameters set, which was a hard braking, releasing once the afterburners were on and fully charged. The extra afterburning special mode there, um, <clears throat> we just about made it. Um, and that's full fuel as well then. Uh, now there is a third way of doing things. You can put chocks on the plane, uh, use the aircraft carrier's chocks and uh, afterburner ramp, uh, but that's, I think, still in development, so we won't go over that until it's reliable. Otherwise, uh, that's pretty cool. I hope that helped, and we'll see you later.